Zizlav Bakinski. I could be saying his name wrong, but um, I believe it's an untitled piece that he did, but it's very similar um, in feel and look. And then I just grabbed a image of a skull here and a nebula and a mandela because I want to work in kind of that into my design too. Now I'm probably just going to do like a really large face this time. I wanted to try to do something that's a little bit um, just gonna so it's a little bit more transparent there for now. I wanted to do something that hopefully I can do a little quicker than an eight hour stream. <laughs> But we'll see. So I have some pretty big changes I'm going to probably be making to the character. Um, so I'm just going to start off here. Let's try and get a... Oh, I'm just going to make sure that we're... There we go. Ugh. Sorry, having lots of little technical issues today. That zoom, I hate the zoom in this. It's so heat, like Clip Studio. If there's a way for me to make these automatic zoom points not be so large, please tell me how to do it because they are super, super annoying that... I don't seem to have any control over that. Now I'm going to probably do more. You'll see what my kind of idea is here. I want to kind of do more of a, since he does kind of have a skull shape, I'm going to do a little bit more of a skull shaped to the glowing eyes here. And he does kind of have a does kind of have the kind of look of a actual skull in his nose part part there. Um, and he's kind of got this thing that goes around the bottom there of. Of his eyes. Why am I? Okay, it's just saving in the background. All right. Sorry if I'm a little bit frazzled. I had everything pretty much go wrong with this stream. First, my mic was muted, or not my mic was muted. Um, first thing was that my stream started too soon because all of a sudden in, um, in YouTube Studio, it just automatically started my stream when I pressed start stream in OBS, which it used to not. It used to have a secondary um, thing that I'd have to press in, in YouTube studio to start the stream. So I'm not sure what I did to change that, but I'm going to have to figure that one out. So I don't want everything just starting immediately while I'm trying to set stuff up. I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world if it did, but, um, it's not exactly how I would want it to work. I'd prefer that I have that secondary option there. I'm just kind of drawing skull-like stuff right now. Just being really cognizant of like the his shape still. Really kind of glad I just grabbed the reference of this one too. I, I 
wanted to do something because a lot of them, I, a lot of these streams, I've been starting from a fairly finished sketch um, to begin with. So I just wanted to, in this one, kind of show from start to finish kind of what, how I do it. I'm just gonna and that's uh, probably incisors there. I find that the bottom teeth are kind of more angled. Then I can go in and round and peek off the top of the the teeth there. See, what I'm thinking is instead of having like just drawing a big circle and doing glowing lights, I think I'm going to kind of start with um, kind of the empty skull shape and then light that up from the inside with the light. That's what I'm thinking. And if you can see here, let me bring the references um, opacity back up here. Now... Also, what I'm thinking is um, so this little green section here that goes kind of like glasses almost around the head. I'm thinking I'm going to do something kind of like a metal thing, but then I'm thinking also I want it kind of bolted to his head and same with this orange circular part. And then this here. I'm thinking that kind of Mandela thing, so I'll go way more detailed in everything. So this is like basically if a person was to, um, if your job was to take this and kind of make it into something more real. Um, So if you're working, this is like something you might do if you were working in um, it's like a character designer working with a um, animation team or something um, on a movie where you might be taking a character and Trying to realize them more realistically. Oh, just try to keep as loose as you can in these spots. This is where you're really figuring out what you like, what you don't like. So you can always change anything that you don't think is working quite the way you want it to. I'm sure I could be doing a kind of mirroring effect to have it completely symmetrical, but um, I feel like that kind of takes some of the naturalness out of out of the drawing. So if you're wondering why I'm not doing that, that's why. That ends right up back at the top here. So let's just. Keep going around. We'll connect that. And we'll have that end somewhere on the brow line there.
And I'm just kind of just going around the shapes I already have pretty much. Well, it's Mandela kind of thing here. Just want to see what. Yeah, so it'll start. sections here so we'll probably do one tricks to drawing circles I don't know any <laughs> I just do them the best I can if it's not completely correct it's okay in my mind You can always keep working it. And uh, probably a secondary circle here. And this one we'll probably be doing something like this. Kind of popping out here. Don't tell along those lines. I'm thinking. I'm not going to really go into a whole lot of detail on this part right now. Just kind of getting some of the shapes down that we're going to be using. So I'm just using that more for ideas um, of how uh, these things kind of work. Yeah, and then what I think I'm going to do, instead of it kind of being like this thing that's kind of sticking out from the head, I think I'm going to more like burrow that into the skull. Um, that's what I'm thinking. And then he's kind of got these kind of boil shapes going on after and then he's got spikes everywhere coming on out of his head so we'll probably do something turn that reverence off for right in the, the second um we're gonna have a secondary kind of line
Just putting little details in there. Um, Bolo, if you don't watch Final Space, he's kind of like this, what they're, what they're called Titans from, uh, like Dimension called like Final Space. And, uh, I really like that kind of like Lovecraftian kind of, these giant hulking alien, um, creatures that are kind of battling over the the rule of the universe. It's kind of rare. I'm going to have to turn off some of these for now. Um, just so I have more room and space to kind of see the way that the horns work here. And this one kind of juts out forward and goes up. So I'm just going to it was kind of that shape. Now these I might actually make kind of bigger too. Now that kind of reminds me of like a what is it? Like an Oni mask from like Japan or something too. So like horns on the head there. Let's move this one. Let's move that to a little higher, wider. And then he's kind of got this like crazy lion's mane looking um, bit to his head too. He's got And he's got these like these kind of like rings that go around before his horns come out. I mean, his larger, kind of like bull horns there. Uh, I, I just thought this guy has a really cool kind of design. That's why I really wanted to... I was trying to think of like, well, if, if I want to draw something Final Space, what do I want to do? Um, I thought this was kind of the way to go. I'm going to actually copy that, paste it, uh, transform it, switch its side, and just move it over. And so return to keep the transform and then I will right click that with merge with the layer below and there. And we got, oops, uh, we got, where's my pencil again? And he also has these kind of like weird kind of glandular things coming off here. To me, it's just an iconic character design. Like you can d definitely see, I would be 
be shocked if they didn't take inspiration from that um, uh, Zidis Law um, piece because it's so similar in tone, but it could just be some creative synergy that, or uh, unknowing uh, inspiration. Um, You never really see the neck portion here. It's kind of got this like lion's mane thing going on here. I'm just going to throw something in there for now. Almost could also be kind of like um like a crazy long sideburn, like a mutton chops kind of thing. Could think of it that way too, I, I guess. I'm going to give them a lot more muscle definition than they did on the show here. Or portions. I just kind of want to get kind of where the collarbone would be. And then here's these gigantic shoulders. Give those a more realistic shape, those trapezius kind of muscles there. And delts. And turn off that. I'm not sure if I want to make that smaller. No, I don't think so. Let's just keep him the primary focus here. All right, so we got some more kind of like spike things coming off of him here. Okay, everything's still running okay. Oops. Whenever I go back um, from my uh, monitor here from my other window, <laughs> it draws super dark. So, just gotta. So if you see all of a sudden it's when it draws all of a sudden way darker there, that's not exactly because I want it to. <laughs> okay. All right, now I'm just going to go in there with... Uh, with kind of more of like a pen tip and then I'm gonna add some more details in here. I'm also gonna lower the opac opacity on that layer a bit. Now I'm gonna be doing a digital painting of this so this is just going to be really my um, 
kind of my rough layer to reference as I'm painting. Which is kind of the way I usually work. So I'm thinking Oops. <laughs> the reason why I'm not an inker. <laughs> Uh, the steadiest hand for inking. I'll also be putting in a little bit more detail also in, in this um, portion. Actually, go all the way to where the Mandela is. I'm actually, listening to the Final Space soundtrack from season one, I think it is. Um, it's really got like a great kind of mood to everything that they have on the soundtrack for drawing. Actually last night I was doing some Green Goblin kind of drawings because I was kind of between this and Green Goblin but then I ended up going too far. With the pre-drawing that's kind of also why i decided like mm, you know what i should probably try one of these where i'm just going from start to finish um but i the next series will probably just be a digital painting series of me doing um the painting version of that green goblin piece i'm working on I think people should really enjoy it's very similar though I thought too to I just did spider Gwen and I was like oh, two spider-man things back to back probably not the best idea I'm just going to look up one more reference thing here. I'm just looking at um, kind of like how the how the Terminators um, kind of metal sections how they kind of look they like which I want to kind of emulate here because I want this kind of to be kind of like metal that pieces that he's bolted on to himself I'm just going to give it kind of some Let's 
some little things that make it look a little bit like like that. I really, th there's not that much that they did actually to it. Um, I thought there was a lot more, but um, I think just little bits like that will kind of give you that same kind of idea. So the inside of the skull here, let's, well, I'll do that more with like a, more like a brush, I think, closer to when I'm nearer to the end there. But let's bring that skull portion up again. So this I do want to be kind of more accurate to that an actual skull. I'm doing this a little bit unrealistic because I put the incisors way out there, but I'm thinking he's an alien. <laughs> Could pretty much do anything. <laughs> Make a little bit of creative uh, license there with that.
Oh, I forgot. He's kind of got a little, um, kind of weird lip, doesn't he? That goes around that opening. So we'll do that too. I'm being a little bit more sketchy with the lines here and I'll clean them up kind of after just because I didn't pre-draw this part so harder to bake nice smooth lines not that this is ever going to be seen anyway since this part is going to be in the all painted over anyways but it's nice to have a kind of nice line drawing to start with it actually might end up being kind of a neat lip thing to paint later It does remind me here of this kind of like mouth shape that there, but um, Also reminds me a little bit of um, They Live, which probably was an inspiration a little bit for his design as, as well. Um, if you haven't seen the movie They Live, it's um, directed by John Carpenter and it's uh, kind of an action horror movie from the, from the 80s. Um, all about corporate greed and consumerism. And uh, the world is kind of being taken over by these aliens secretly. I've been running the place and they're using subliminal messages and stuff to control humanity. Real fun. Um, movie starring um, Roddy Piper uh, for this part it would have been nice to actually have the mirroring on <laughs> this Mandela stuff or Ma Mandala, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly.
should not actually be using the most traditional mandala shapes, but Wondering if I should draw this out separate. Maybe I will. I'm going to do that on a separate layer. And let me just see. Gonna see if there's a way how to mirror draw in Clip Studio. Alright, so it's a ruler. So it's probably in layer ruler. No, it is not. <laughs> okay. Um Create a vertical ruler. Nope, that's not what I want to know. Symmetry ruler. So what if I go to the rulers here? Where are the rulers there? Symmetrical ruler. Okay, now let's make another layer and see how that works. Nothing. Does it have to be on this layer? Oh, it does. Oh, okay, cool. Go in there. Oh, interesting. It doesn't do symmetry for the racer tool. Interesting. Good to know. Oops. Alright, so this tool is really making this a lot easier to do. I mean, it's a, there's little issues like the endpoints there need to be cleaned up, but really cool. Uh, let's go wider. sure what I was doing with some of the other stuff there. Seems like my pen thickness has gone way up. Let me just turn that down a little bit. I'm probably just pressing harder, but
This can be uh, <laughs> something that gets out of hand, I can see. <laughs> Cool. Well, I'm liking that so far. Uh, I just gotta move some stuff down here. Just grabbing this whole art. Let's see if I can grab this whole section here. And I'm just gonna use this move tool here and kind of reposition it and cool so I'm just going to delete that symmetry ruler just so oops um, what can I do so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do that and then I'm just going to fill That didn't work. Let's just take a this and we'll just do that. Now I control click that layer and so it selected everything on that layer and then I just kind of copied um, copied it over. I'm just gonna go back in here on this layer and I, it's gonna before I kind of collapse and Join the layers here. I'm just gonna fix up one or two things I have going on here, like this here, and then I will just go in here. I'll fix up. <laughs> There's some real reasons here. Okay, so I'm just gonna delete the layer the original layer with the ruler I just don't want that ruler affecting any other layers I'm not sure if it does so that's why I'm doing that I'm just gonna merge that with the layer below mm, so far that's what we got which is looking pretty darn good if I don't say so myself um. A lot of the stuff in this that's going to to make any of this part look better, it's probably just going to be done in the in um, the paint, like adding detail work here. Probably be done it mostly in the paint. Um, process part so that I want yeah let's do that kind of thing now that you can see this here and this here way lower so I'm just gonna go in here bring that down I said doesn't need to be perfect but just want it to be closer to the way that one is
I'm gonna lie, it's a little bit tempting to just put on that mirroring for the rest of this. <laughs> but I'm not going yet. Um, I think in the long run, this will look way more organic. I'm thinking I'm going to do something like that. Yeah, I made the horns more kind of like um, the horns of the devil demon guy in Legend. Um... I just like that shape for them a little bit more. It's adding some kind of weird details so it looks more like bolted on metal like the other stuff there. Let's just grab this. Now this I am gonna just copy, paste, and then transform tool. And bring that to the other side. It's because I feel like that is something that's gonna be way tougher to replicate. Now I'm just gonna Merge that with a layer below. I'm just going to move this over a bit. See if I can't get that completely centered. And back to everything else here. Sides up a little bit again. Given that kind of a more hair like shape there, or look kind of like flamey actually. <laughs> it's kind of how I sometimes start off hair. Um, just depends. Gotta not gonna start drawing too many strands or anything in there. Just gonna kind of get the shape that I want it first.
I'm just looking at some more reference here. But I'm basically looking for somebody with like a kind of like a veiny neck. <laughs> Most of it is covered here, but I'm just gonna still kind of use a little bit of reference here. So you kind of get a dip here where the where the clavicle kind of meets. You kind of get this. Mm, that should be moved over. Mm, just gonna start that again. Okay, we want have a Kind of like striated neck is not really something that you s <laughs> that uh, shows up all that well in pictures, it seems. Now, I may have gone a little small on his traps, actually, for... I'm going by like size of like humans. They're a little bit close together. So I'm just making a few changes on the fly to that. So I'm not sure how much of these shoulder spikes I'm actually going to get in there, but. Should be getting in well, the upper chest kind of first tier chest kind of has like people think of a chest as having um, this kind of one shape of the muscles going across the chest but they don't really you have this kind of like banded muscle from like um, from kind of your lower pec to kind of your clavicle um, as your upper chest and then you have everything else kind of going against that into it kind of um, I don't know if I'm explaining that correctly but I'm trying to <laughs> I'm just gonna erase this here Sure. So 
Sure, that's still on brand for him, yes. So here's kind of like our base that we're going to start with. As we go forward with the uh, digital painting aspect of it. Um, and I'm just going to quickly go in here with a different kind of brush. I'm just going to work on a little bit of, of shading. You know what? No, it's an extra step that doesn't need to be done. Okay, so it's kind of like this minty blue kind of color with yellow hair. So I'm just going to take a base of something like that and I'm just going to do a full layer. That. And right now I'm just going to set that to multiply. And I'm just going to go along kind of the edge here. Oh, that's, mm -hmm. I'm just going to go, yeah, what I'll do is I'll just going to use the, that tool to kind of get that going. I'm just using the lasso tool because it's probably going to be the quickest way as opposed to going in there with an eraser or something. You can always clean up any of those edges after. Just, oops. So I can just kind of go in there quickly and take out big sections that are going to be not kind of his skin tone. No, it's probably not the skin tone I'm going for. I just wanted something similar just to put in there for now. I usually start from uh, from like the shadow tone to and then work to a highlight so I might actually change this tone quite a bit you know what yeah let's do it that way so I'm just gonna delete that layer and then make a new layer I'm gonna push my shadows into a kind of a warmer tone. Oh, deselect that first. Okay, good. Uh, put that on to multiply. Actually, I'm going to take the drawing layer I did, set that to multiply, and I'll lower the opacity on that. And now, I'm just going to look up some like skin tones that are kind of bluish um so maybe like chameleon or something Ooh, they're all different colors of course because they can switch <laughs> but 
gives me kind of an idea of where to go with with this. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this image, put it on in my reference folder. And this is kind of the tones I'm going to be working with for him. Yeah, that looks about right. So I'm just going to grab the darkest kind of tone there, which I think, yeah, is pretty close to what we have with our, with our tone. And I'm just going to grab that and I'm just going to start painting in here now. Now I'm going to kind of have him almost like backlit. And so I'm just going to start off as kind of getting around the edge where all of that is going to show up the most. And we'll work in from there. I'm also going to have the skull skull reference out there. I'm just going to move that over. Oops. Oops. I was drawing that on the wrong layer. Gonna let me go back far enough. Yep. Okay. Skull. Move that over here. Because I kind of like the way that's lit. So I'm going to do something a little bit like that. Except I'm going to add a little bit of it being backlit, I guess. Um, okay, so let's do um, so I need a new layer here. Forgot that I was going to use this one kind of as reference <laughs> for lighting as well. Now I'm just using this um, oil um, number three brush that's from the um, Ahmed Alduri paintbrush set. Um, you can get it for free from his site, I believe. That's where I got it from. Um, Yes, they're really nice paintbrushes. Um, it's a good addition to what they already have. They have some nice paintbrushes and um, in Clip Studio anyways, but um, I really do kind of prefer these. Just kind of using that reference, looking at where the kind of more highlighted areas are. Just filling out this. Like I said, I mean, I'm going to put a little bit of like a backlight situation too. Um, actually maybe not, maybe on the hair it will show through, but not very much throughout the rest of him. Might not make as much sense if I do that. I'm just going to lower 
lower that brush size. Nothing wrong with lowering your brush size. I know some people think you should paint all in one brush size, but that's it's good practice. But uh, I've said this before, but I don't think it's necessary um, to get a, any to get a professional quality looking piece. I'm just going to turn that layer off, just check kind of how it's going. Do something similar on this side too. Another soundtrack I've been listening to a lot when I'm drawing is um, the new Dune movie. Even though it hasn't been released out, um, the movie hasn't been released yet um, in North America. But the soundtrack is on um, YouTube. And um, it's really nice, good atmosphere, kind of. music to listen to while drawing. Often I'll listen to stuff with actual lyrics and stuff too, but um, not when I'm doing a stream or something. So stop. I stop talking <laughs> during the stream if I do that. should actually be decently bright. As you notice, I kind of start pretty um, dark and just keep lightening up stuff, lightening it up, lightening it up as I work. It's kind of generally my method. section music stopped here so I'm just gonna rewind that
I might also introduce some color, just lighted um, lighting color into this too, uh, meaning that um, if um, so, like actual colored light hitting him, um, but we'll work that out once I kind of get the base um, illumination kind of down. easy enough to do that you just kind of do it kind of on another layer and um, and from there you you kind of add it in after the fact uh, kind of given that's what we want eventually I'll turn off this drawing I'm just kind of getting stuff in there first just in the shapes and places that I want it. Now I'm also just going to grab kind of a dark color here. That yellowish bone is going to be it's very close to like the gold kind of color I'm going to look for when I'm doing this section. Or wait, um, let me check. What color is that on? below okay so it's kind of like this green what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna do it kind of in a gray tone um, that all I think it's gonna be like a chrome silver kind of look is what I'm gonna end up doing Then the inner part I'm going to do like in a gold kind of look. I think that will look really neat. I'm just going to save because I haven't saved in a while. Even though I have it to automatically save at times. Which you'll see when I kind of just stop working. Um, usually that's because it's doing something in the background and I'm just waiting for it to finish saving. I'm just going to fill that for now. Um, still don't know the right settings to get rid of that aliasing line. I've tried a few different things, I just don't know. So if anybody knows exactly what kind of setting to get rid of that alias line. I'd greatly appreciate it. Well, this is when I'm going to kind of pay more attention to the quality of the line on of the shape. Refine stuff you don't like with your eraser tool. And just built up that back side because I know I'm going to be pulling away from this side. Just so I have it there. So 
Same thing here. So I know I can have, have it to pull away from. Just gonna do that. And, oops. Forgot to close the other end <laughs> of that there. And let's bring that up just a little higher so it matches the other side. Fill that out. And still with that stupid alias line. Could have been because of my line work there, to be honest. But. All right. Well, this one I kind of had a. Had a Pump up a bit. There we go. Again, I'm going to grab kind of a darker tone there for what is going to be this gold inner layer. And I'm just kind of flatting this area. Um, Meaning I'm just putting in a flat, toneless color in these sections for now. By toneless, I just mean it doesn't have any shading additionally to it. It's just a solid color. I think it's going to look really cool once I do kind of like an inner glowing light coming out of those eye sockets instead of just big round kind of like googly eyes that he kind of has in the original. I understand why they did it that way. Obviously it would be really tough to do it any other way, but... And it looks really good in the animated show, but we're trying to do something a little different here. Just up the realism factor a little bit to it. <laughs> I was wondering why I wasn't grabbing the right color. Usually if it's not grabbing the right color, you're on the wrong layer. It's a good indicator of that. Just going to grab... Now grab... Um, just going to look at some T800 kind of Terminator skulls here. Just to kind of get an idea of the chrome lighting. What they kind of have going on. And grab a green layer here. Let's hmm. Why am I not getting... What layer am I on here? On the wrong layer again. There we go. Hmm. 
Okay, what's going on here? So this one is that one. That one's on multiply, so bring that one just above that, and then this is... Okay, good. Just wasn't sure exactly what layer I was putting stuff on there. Had me a little bit worried. So a good way of doing this is I'm just going to grab this one here and um, can kind of just work almost in kind of lines. Gives you that kind of metal effect a little bit. Just bring that down. We'll do the same thing with highlights in there. Um, I don't really. I'm just looking at a reference on my other screen here, and I just don't really like that reference. If I can find something better here, maybe. Bring the brush size back up. shadow along the edge at the bottom here even though I guess we're doing the lighting from below so I might actually have to swap that with the highlight once I get the highlight kind of color in there to be honest I'm just gonna do that just so I can get kind of that nice Kind of 3D shape to this to start with. And always fix that stuff after. Just gives you a good idea of where you're going with it. That'll probably be a highlight too. But especially since the eyes will be glowing. So this is going to make it a little bit orga more organic in the shape than I currently have that by just kind of filling out that there is some shape to this as well. It's not just like f completely flat. This area here, I probably went 
the opposite of what I should have done. I'm just kind of grabbing that stuff there and lightening that up. Smoothing it all out now. Some of these parts I went, I think I went a little too straight with those lines there actually, now that I think about it. Now, what? Kind of more of a highlight on color. I'm going to deselect that for a second so I can see better what kind of what I'm doing. So it is kind of getting somewhat of a more metallic feel to it, but still going to need a little bit of work. Mostly because I don't have really kind of bright highlights in there yet. Not using the reference as much anymore. The as in the T eight hundred picture I have open on the other side. Um, that's from the Terminator. If you guys aren't aware, um, so it's kind of like a metallic skull. I'm just kind of using that as a little bit of reference here as I. work on this guy. Just gonna grab a thicker brush again. Just wanna lighten up this area here. This. I'm getting a little bit better. Um. Have that metallic kind of look. In there. I'm 
just want to make sure too that I'm getting kind of this kind of highlighted area in the skin here. Sorry, I just kind of jump around every now and then. Um, I said this in another stream. It's really just to um, just keep my energy up because I'll get bored of doing a certain area or a certain type of thing. And it just helps to sometimes to just take a break from that section and move on, try something else somewhere else. I'm just kind of mixing that together a little bit better. I actually am just going to grab the, um, I really like in the thick paint thing here, there's a gouache blender. I really do. I'm really starting to enjoy using that brush. Early on, I wasn't a big fan of using the blenders because um, I kind of like the grittiness you got out of the strokes, but I really like how this blender, you still get some, some of that, still retain some of that. It doesn't completely wash it all out, but you can really kind of drag in, drag some of these colors around, kind of like the way you would push around real paint, which is really nice. You just got to be aware that you can, you might have to go back in there and um, sharpen up some of your lines after. This actually might work nice on here too. Uh, maybe not. I'm going to probably go for another 20 minutes here today. And then we'll probably maybe at most have maybe two more sessions before this is complete. Um, I don't think it's going to take as long as some of the other pieces. Um, just being that it doesn't have like a big detailed background or anything. That's just a character piece. Um, just really depends on how detailed I end up going. So probably want to try out some techniques I don't use much. Um, so I don't often, I usually do full body characters. I don't often do just like somebody's face or anything like that. Um, so there's stuff I'll, I want to definitely try um, working with that as well. And I'm just going to turn back on that so I can, I'm just going to draw back in some of these lines that I had here. But I'm going to do smaller brush. I'm actually going to use the shift line there so I can get the actual where I had it. Just there we go. I'm gonna add a little bit of a now for these kind of lines you just kinda wanna put down a highlight right next to that and it'll just give it a little bit more depth to the line and make it look a little bit more 3D. Basically you're um, doing the same thing that you would do with an emboss kind of tool. Now this one I don't think I'm gonna be able to do. Oh, let's... No. So I'm gonna start from here, go from there, Oh, there's still the other one in there. Start from there. Go to there. I'm just going to turn that off. Oh, my monitor <laughs> took off on me there. Well, my monitor stand uh, just moved on me. 
I could probably use like a vector layer there or something to make it so that's kind of a more perfect version of that line, but that's good enough. All right, so already that's starting to look more like it's bolted onto the face instead of instead of it actually being drawn onto that part. Yeah, I think that's gonna look really neat. I'm just trying to see where my other ones are. Okay, so I have just these larger cutouts here. I'm just going to grab this pen again. What I'm going to do is... Oh, why am I not... Oh, I'm on gouache blender, that's why. <laughs> Alright. Wrong tool. There's sections there that I just want to kind of look like they're cut out. I'm just going to add a little bit of that in there, and then I'm probably just going to run a little edge highlight along the edge there. Need to have to be a little bit brighter yet. I don't want to put in too bright highlights yet because I'm not sure if I'm just going to do what I'm going to do with that. I might actually have the um, brighter colors that are coming out of the eyes that hit these sections. So I'm just being a little bit careful about what I'm doing with that right now. Now do I have anything else kind of in there? Might put some more of these kind of drilled in. And almost like screw hole looking part there. Yeah. I'll probably just keep adding in more and more and more and more and more and more stuff like that as it goes on. Um, let me just zoom in here so you guys can really see kind of how that's working. I'm just going to go back up to my blender there. I just want to work this area a little bit more. I really like how vibrant this kind of skin gets here. So I am going to have to go in there with a little bit better highlights and, and stuff. Oh, so that's going to be underlit. This area here is so probably gonna need something like that. Mm. Blend that, soften that all back up there. It's a little too much. A little too much you can always I almost think of it as if you ever are doing pencil drawing and you use your finger to to lighten up stuff it's almost the same effect with that gouache blender same kind of idea You're just softening up what's there and blending it together a little bit the nice thing about that gouache one is it does have like a little bit of a texture to it it's almost like um 
like you're seeing the grain of a pa of a paper below it coming through still, which is really nice. Real nice effect. really getting the nice tonal variation that that guy has coming through yet but we'll keep on working keep on working it till it does I'm just gonna I'm just gonna grab this and I'm gonna throw in kind of what's Let's highlight there. Just so I kind of have an area there that I know where that is. And there's no problem with keeping the other layer on. It's just it can um, be distracting and then when you actually come out you notice that you're that you've gone over kind of shadow areas that you didn't want to and stuff like that so it's always good to if you can work as much out of that sketch as possible But it really does help in the beginning stages if you're just getting all the shapes that you had in there. Connecting these kind of to the sections that I'm going to bring right up to the edge of that there. You know what? I kind of like that. Even though it's not real, like how that would really work, I kind of do like the fact that I see a little bit of something else in there. I'm just gonna go for like five more minutes here but I just for fun want to throw in kind of what I'm thinking for the eyes um, where's Bolo there he is so he's got these nice kind of like yellowy glow out of his eyes yellow um, green kind of blow or glow um, so let me just grab Kinda. I'm gonna grab the soft here, make those big. And then make that smaller. I'm 
just kind of giving them kind of like almost waves coming off of it. And then I'm going to go even yellower, brighter. All right, so that's cool. I'm just gonna grab a bigger eraser here, just erase where that's not going to be. Okay, let's turn the reference off here. Turn that layer back on. And I'm going to put that layer under this layer. We are going to... Oops. And that layer to normal. And up the opacity. All right, so that gives you a good idea of kind of where we're at so far with that. I'm really kind of liking the way it's going. I still got to do a lot of kind of tonal variation stuff in the skin itself. Um, and I still need to fill out those highlights to, well, there's still quite a bit left. But I think from here on, like the bigger the sections are, the quicker they're going to be. Because um, there's less little tiny details in them. But uh, yeah, I kind of... He's looking super creepy too, which is good. But um, let me just go into more of a close-up view. We'll get rid of that. And oh, see the zoom is just too strong. Want it to be even when you're trying to just lit micro step it. It's just a little much. All right, so that's where we're going to leave off today. And I hope you've enjoyed it. And sorry for all the technical difficulties. Um, unfortunately, um, stuff like that crops up when you're doing stuff online. And hopefully I'll figure out some of that stuff. So if anybody knows how to... Um, how to um, stop it from um starting the the youtube studio stream um when you press start stream in obs um that'd be greatly appreciated if you know how to do that just give me a shout out in the comments and if you have any questions um just leave them in the comments and i just want you all to uh stay creative and thank you for watching <laughs>